Pate is a paste, pie, or loaf typically made with liver. In addition to liver, it usually contains meat, fat, spices, alcohol. It can be served hot or cold and is considered best after several days of chilling. Pate being more popular in European countries might explain why they're healthier. Animal foods like liver contain very high amounts of vitamins and most Americans are lacking vitamins in their diet. The types of liver that are typically used for pate are poultry livers, chicken, turkey, duck, goose, foie gras, although foie gras is duck liver that is fattened. So what they do is they force feed grain to the duck. They essentially give the ducks fatty liver, a little bit unethical, so I don't use foie gras in my pate, although foie gras is a very classic French pate, and there are ethical farms that do produce foie gras in much better ways than others. Chicken and turkey liver are your mildest tasting livers, turkey liver being slightly milder. Duck liver tastes a bit, well, ducky, and some people consider that gamey. Uh, goose liver, some people might consider gamey as well, but goose liver is considered higher quality because of its sweeter flavor. Pork can be an issue because Pork liver can be really bitter if the animal was fed a poor quality diet, and most pork is. Foie gras, of course, is in a category on its own in regards to flavor. It pretty much tastes like pate without making it into pate. It's much fatter, it's much richer, it has less of that livery flavor. You could use things like beef, lamb, wild game liver in pates if you wanted to. Although be mindful, there will be a much more prominent mineral flavor because of the different nutritional profile of the animal and just how it tastes inherently. The nutrient profile of poultry liver differs slightly from ruminant animal liver. It tends to be higher in vitamin K2 because certain birds do store fat in their liver, unlike these ruminant animals. So what you'll see on a nutrient database is these bird livers will have a high vitamin K2 content. They'll have a similar amount of vitamin A content, but the B12 content in the livers will be slightly lower. That's mainly due to the macronutrient profile. So Arguably, is it better to consume poultry liver from a health perspective? The issue is they tend to be fed corn or soy, therefore are higher in omega-6. So on paper, yes, a wild game bird's liver will be better for you than a ruminant animal just because of the high K2 and the high fat content. One other thing worth mentioning is the copper content of these livers. Poultry liver tends to be one quarter to one fifth of the copper that ruminant livers have. So if you do want to consume liver every single day, I suggest consuming poultry livers. If you want to consume liver less infrequently, once or twice a week, that's where the beef liver, the lamb liver comes in. On to the fat source. The fat source is very important. It will determine one of the primary flavors of the pate as at least half of the pate is composed of fat. Butter, cream, duck fat are all commonly used. As you can imagine, butter and cream would be used in most pâtés and duck fat would probably be in like a duck pâté. Butter will be richer, less milky. Cream will be smoother and have that dairy flavor. Duck fat or any animal fat, of course, will taste like the animal and that will be the richest. Uh, I remember one time I went to this uh, restaurant in Manhattan and uh, for my birthday at a steakhouse, they had this duck pate on the table with bread and me being on the carnivore diet. Uh, I didn't eat the bread, but I had the duck pate. I had like three tablespoons of this duck pate. And that was the first time in my life. I don't think I finished a steak in a restaurant. It was so rich and fatty and filling. For nutrient profile, fat can add a lot. A raw grass fed butter can add significant amounts of all the fat soluble vitamins, A, C, D, and E, especially if it's from summer pasture butter. Whereas something like grain-fed beef tallow or regular bacon fat would have an insignificant nutrient content. So in regards to creating a nutrient-dense pate, the food quality of the fat is one of the most determining factors. On to the allium. Most recipes use onion or shallot. Of course, American recipes with like chicken livers tend to lean towards onion. French recipes, shallot. Shallot is a milder flavor. I usually use shallots myself. All pâtés have onion and shallot in them as flavoring agents and seasoning. If I do use allium in my pâté, I like to caramelize it 
to add depth of flavor as well as a little bit of sweetness. Seasoning is where it gets a little bit confusing because every single pate recipe you look up, the seasoning is different outside of those classic foie gras terrines. Most foie gras pates use the same ingredients, but we can see combinations like garlic, rosemary, thyme, and bay leaf. We can see combinations like clove, nutmeg, cinnamon, and coriander, and then black pepper and parsley are usually thrown in between. I would keep those two categories separate the green herbs versus the hard spices. Uh, you can mix and match however you'd like, but what I've noticed in these recipes is that things like the garlic, the thyme, the rosemary, the bay leaf tend to be together in the recipe. And if a recipe has those, it generally does not contain clove, nutmeg, cinnamon, coriander, allspice. Alcohol is another key component of pâtés. If you don't put alcohol in your pâté, it will not taste correct. The most popular is cognac, aka brandy. It's distilled from grapes. I believe it's the Uni Blanc grape, and sometimes they use some other grapes from a very specific region of France. I've also seen sherry used as well as bourbon. Sherry, of course, in most European pâtés, and bourbon is used in a lot of chicken liver pâtés I've seen in America. Uh, Sauternes is a classic sweet wine from France. It's the Bordeaux region. That's usually used in foie gras pâtés. Uh, so turn I've seen used in some pâtés, but it's typically associated specifically with foie gras. Uh, so turn and foie gras, super classic flavor pairing. So turn being a sweet wine made from essentially rotten grapes is super like honey flavored, can sometimes have notes of mushroom fungus, super, super sweet, acidic, full bodied, goes very well with the fatty and rich foie gras. Uh, this is something that you might have had in a very fancy anniversary or birthday out in a restaurant. The last component of pâté is meat. Uh, I've used bacon in the past to cut my pâté. The reason you would do this is you don't like liver, your liver is poor quality and doesn't taste good, or essentially you just like it more. Uh, this isn't typical in pâtés, it's not classic. Uh, I've seen it done before and I've done it myself in the past. I think it's a great thing to do to introduce people to pâté. All of that being said, unfortunately guys, I won't be using most of these components for my carnivore pate. I will be excluding the allium, the seasoning, and the alcohol. No onions, no herbs, no spices, no alcohol. Today I'm using duck liver, raw cream, raw butter, and I will use raw honey to cut any bitterness. And this is for my family. Otherwise, personally, I mean, I'm allergic to dairy, so I can't really make this. Uh, if I was making pate for myself, I'd have to use animal fat. Uh, you could also add egg yolks, which isn't really mentioned, but I do find that adding egg yolks to this uh, is a great way to add a certain texture and consistency as well as improve the flavor. Uh, what we're essentially going to do today is just pan sear some liver and blend it up with some butter, cream, and honey. Uh, you can make this raw. Uh, I've made this raw in the past. The flavor of it raw is delicious, although I do find that if you caramelize the outside of the liver, it really adds and adds a punch to this pate that makes it so flavorful. The Mayan reaction when you blend it up with these flavors, it's, it's so good. Of course, the first component is the liver. And I actually had this liver sitting in paper towels overnight. As you can see, the surface is very dry. This is super important for getting a nice pan sear. Uh, if you don't want to use paper towel, you could use linen rags. You could also leave it on a rack in the fridge overnight to dry it out. The drier the surface is, the easier it is to get a crispy crust, and you don't want to overcook your liver. So can you do this without drying out the surface of the duck liver? Of course, and you could even just dry it out right before you pan sear it, but you don't want to be putting wet liver into a pan. Uh, the water's going to pop, it's going to go everywhere, and you're not going to get a nice crust. Uh, the fat components that we're using today, here I have some bacon fat to cook the liver in. Uh, you could use clarified butter, you just want a fat that's not going to smoke or burn or oxidize. Uh, butter, you can use. The butter will burn a bit, so keep in mind there will be a little bit of a burnt butter flavor. Uh, when we go to actually blend the pate, here I have some raw butter from a local farm. This can actually be like orange in color if it's really, really high quality. And here I have some raw cream uh, from the same farm. So we're going to blend that up. Uh, this is some raw honey. My parents bought this. I don't actually eat honey anymore. Uh, I know this probably isn't legitimately raw honey. It was likely heated above 95 degrees. Uh, normally, I would go local, get some actual high-quality raw honey, but 
this is what we're using today. Um, in regards to equipment, uh, I like using a non-stick pan to sear the liver. Makes it a lot easier. Of course, we have a cover for the pan to alleviate the mess. I got two spoons, one to spoon the bacon fat into the pan and the other to clean this spoon off. Frankie is on the ball today, uh, making sure everything's here and ready. I've uh, got a rag to stay nice and tidy as well. But outside of the nonsense, guys, you need a sieve. So uh, here I have a mesh strainer with a spatula to pass the pate through it. This will smooth it out into that bowl. And I have a food processor. Uh, you could use a blender and with how most blenders are now, I think they're actually better than food processors. But uh, let's get started. I'm going to put my pan on a medium high heat, uh, put some bacon fat in it, and we'll wait for it to warm up. So since we're not using the onions, the alcohol, and the herbs, we've skipped a step here. Normally, you would caramelize your onions, deglaze the pan with alcohol, add your herbs and seasonings to aromatize them. Then you would take that out of the pan and have it separately later so you can add it to the pate when you're blending it. So this is the second step in that process, which would be just sauteing the liver and getting some caramelization. So if, if you put the liver in the pan and it doesn't start sizzling immediately, take the liver out because the pan isn't hot enough and you're gonna overcook the liver before you get a nice crust. Uh, one thing to be careful about guys is liver and hearts, uh, certain organs when you cook them, they actually pop in the pan and tend to explode. So what I'm going to do here is cover this, just in case grease starts going everywhere. Okay, you guys, you guys hear that popping? Yeah, there's, there, there's grease flying everywhere. So definitely cover livers if you're pan searing them. I just shake the pan a little bit to make sure the heat is evenly distributed. Now I'm gonna flip the livers over. You know, I didn't get an incredible amount of color on these livers. Uh, I'm sure you guys can do a better job if you take more time, but this is good enough and I don't, really don't wanna overcook these livers. So you could put this bacon fat in the pate if you want, I am not going to. So we started with a pound of duck liver and that's what I have in here. Of course, we lost some moisture due to cooking, but in most recipes, we see a one-to-one -one ratio of liver to fat. So that's what we're going to do here. And it's going to seem like we're going to add a lot of fat, but that's necessary. So I put about half a stick of butter in here. Today, I'm going to use 25% butter, 75% cream. The reason for that is I have some extra cream and the cream goes bad quicker. Well, the butter doesn't really go bad at all. I don't know if you guys have ever gotten like local raw cream from a farm, but sometimes it's super duper thick, sometimes it's a little thinner, but we want to add plenty of cream. I'm adding about 12 ounces. And guys, keep in mind ingredient cost here. If you have access to a lot of high quality raw dairy, but the liver is expensive, maybe use more dairy. If the liver's cheap and the butter's expensive, maybe use more liver. Uh, so since we didn't add any salt to this yet, I'm going to add a healthy pinch of salt. And I mean healthy. Now, I have a Celtic salt here. If you guys want to check out what salt I use, I did make a, a video a couple weeks back. Himalayan pink salt is bullshit. And I also have a bunch of salts on my Amazon page. So I'm going to add the honey now. What I suggest you guys do is you taste it before you add the honey. Uh, I've experimented with this before and I know that uh, my sister likes this with honey in it. So I'm going to add about as much honey as I did last time, maybe about a tablespoon and a half. And that should be enough to cut the flavor of the bitterness in the liver. All right, smells really livery. Let's, let's taste it before we sieve it just to see if we have to alter the ingredients. Um, it's okay, definitely tastes like duck. Uh, needs more salt, so I'll add more salt. And it also needs a little more honey. So total so far, about two tablespoons of salt and three tablespoons of honey. And you guys are thinking, well, you know, Frank, three tablespoons of honey is a lot of sugar. Yeah, but you know, this is probably 15, 20 servings of pate. So reality is, 
you're only getting three to four grams of sugar per serving. And if the pate doesn't taste good, they're not going to eat it. When the seasoning is right, guys, you will know. You will put this in your mouth and say, what the... F uh, the thing to keep in mind with things like pate that are accompanied by bread is that you have to over-season them. Uh, what I do for my sister is I slice up some raw cheese and she dips the raw cheese in the pate. Uh, so this has to be salty and sweet to compensate for the possible lack of flavor in whatever you're spreading it on. But this is good, so let's pass it through the sieve. I'm sure some of you guys have worked in the kitchen. Uh, if you want to buy specialized equipment for this, a tammy sieve is what they typically use. And if you don't like the texture of liver, guys, this is what makes the difference. Passing this liver through the sieve. It only takes a minute or two. Uh, I've passed much thicker things through a tammy sieve, and that was a nightmare. I I've done this for two, three hours straight in some cases. All right. As you guys can see, there's a lot of like grit and gristle in the sieve that we got rid of. And of course, don't forget to scrape off the bottom of your sieve. There's a lot of pate on the bottom. All right, guys, here's our big old bowl of pate. So I'm going to throw this in the fridge. This has stayed for three, four weeks just fine. The amount of salt that you put in this, it'll be fine. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and share the video if you can. Down below is my Amazon shop where, as I said earlier, a bunch of products you can use to make this. My Patreon is a great way to get personalized question support as well as support the channel. Uh, me and my friend just started up carnivoreforum.com. We're trying to get the carnivore community together. So guys, please share carnivoreforum.com. We want to have a centralized hub where people can ask questions and get a better understanding of the carnivore diet in a very friendly setting. I also have Twitter guys, Instagram, always posting on there every single day. Uh, last but not least, if you guys do want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in creating your pate masterpiece or just optimizing your health in general, you can reach out to me via email, frankatufano at gmail.com or through the contact form on my website below, frank-stefano.com. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend.